let us come back and do 2012-13 paper so we have already uh, started with 2016-17 so gradually we have come to this paper let us read the question given to us so they have given us write the full form of DNA and RNA it's a basic question the simplest question I believe in chemistry so they want you to write only the full form not the structure nothing so just pick up DNA and RNA so DNA we very well know it is deoxy ribonucleic acid correct right so if you still want to write the structure i've already given the structure for you all for dna where i've shown you the pentose sugar so let us write that so structure for dna it is your pentose sugar yeah most important thing now in the first if i write this is h and h in the second you have h and h there is no oxygen in deoxy third is your hydrogen in oh and the fourth is H and your CH2OH. Correct? Yes. Uh, so, careful uh, with the, the deoxyribose. Here in the second carbon, you don't have any oxygen at. When I come back to ribonucleic RNA, full form ribonucleic acid. Yes. So, again the same structure, the pentose sugar. This is for your ribonucleic acid. Your pentose sugar, your OH and H. In the second carbon, you have hydroxyl group. That is important. This is the only difference between deoxy and uh, RNA. Again, it is your HN, OH, nitrogen and CH2. So that's it. It just finishes your answer. They want you to write the full form. If you were perfect enough, write the structures also. Now, there is one more question here. Yes. They have asked me to define what is glycogen, what, how is it different from starch, how is starch structurally different from cellulose. There are three questions basically in that. First is I have to define glycogen, then I have to compare glycogen with starch. After comparing that, I have to compare starch and cellulose. Three different things I have to do. So first let us write the A part, that is definition of glycogen. What is glycogen actually? Glycogen is a long or a branched chain polysaccharide, correct? We have learned, seen, right? Uh, it uh, contains n number of glucose units. So, let us start. Glycogen is a, is a branched chain polysaccharide. Till now, hope you've understood branch chain polysaccharide, which we have seen where in amylopectin. Yes, so branch chain polysaccharide, which acts as which acts as an acts as an energy reserve. Means it it's used as an energy source, right? Where is it used to energy source in humans? It is used in plants used in bacteria used in fungi also right so basically glycogen when i say now i'll show you the structure also so glycogen basically is a branch chain it has linkages at c1 and c6 uh, this uh, just like your amylopectin c1 and c4 c1 and c6 now here also it's the same branch chain structure but i'm using this as an energy source so this is your keyword this will be there in your key so they want you to, they expect you to write this word. Yes, now let us see the difference. They have asked me to differentiate between all. So I am writing all the three at a stretch. The first one, I am going to write starch. Yes, then I am going to compare this with glycogen. Then I am going to pick this up with cellulose. All the three are there with me. Yeah, let us start. So when I speak about starch, they have asked me structural differences. Just see, structural differences. You have to speak in terms of structural uh, differences only. Here, starch is made up of alpha D glucose units. Yes, I hope you have seen that video where I have given you a list or a table of hydrolysis of sucrose, maltose, lactose, amylose, amylopectin, and cellulose. Please go to that table. It's very important for you. So, you can answer such questions. Yes, cellulose is made up of alpha D glucose units. This also is made up of alpha D glucose units. Yes, but here, sorry, glycogen, but cellulose is made up of beta D glucose units beta d glucose units remember now we you very well know alpha your first hydrogen and uh, it will be the, there's a 
shift of h in oh in the first one in beta it will be oh in h in alpha it will be h in oh please recollect if you have seen the previous theory videos this question will be you think you can understand this question so now here what do you have you basically it, this is made up of two units that is amylose and amylopectin great right now this glycogen is not made of like it's not subdivided further so amylose and amylopectin and we've already seen now amylose is a linear chain right how is it linked it has a link of c1 to c4 linkages correct in amylopectin it has it is branched where you have c1 linkages with c4 and here again you have c1 and c6 Okay, fine. Now, when I come back to glycogen, the most important thing, glycogen resembles its structure is similar to amylopectin. So, it has similar structure to amylopectin. Remember this. Now, what is the difference, ma'am? Because they have asked me to write the difference. See the difference. Now, here we have C1 and C4 linkage. Correct. Again, we have C1 and C6 linkages. See, but only difference is here when you see your starch molecule your c1 linkage or c1 branching starts after every 26th glu glucosylic uh, linkages that means what should i write your branching because we said c1 is like this again c1 links with c6 at what point branching at branching at every 26th the 26th carbon what are you saying 26th glucosyl unit okay at 26th glucosyl unit you will find that branching okay right now when i come back to when i come back to this uh, glycogen remember here also right okay maybe this is not clear i'll write it here i'll erase this hope you have noted this now <clears throat> so what did i say here in your starch molecule and let us divide again in your starch molecule in c1 and c4 linkage right so your c1 and c6 linkage now let us write for glycogen your glycogen molecule has c1 again and c4 this also has c1 c6 correct now what is the difference here this c1 and c6 linkage occurs at every 26th carbon every 26 carbon sh start showing the branches so we call every 26th glucosyl linkage right now in glycogen what happens i said compared to this this is more branched here every 10th carbon atom or every 10th glucosyl linkage forms a branch glucosyl linkage forms a branch so remember branching is at this point branching at this point that is the main structural difference which you have to do because in your board key you will have this word this particular word and this particular word this is what the examiner expects you to write so you can write branching right let us come back to the last uh, so that is your cellulose you will still have place here i'm writing here so cellulose basically we say it is made up of beta d glucose units one beta again condensing with one more beta correct that's it goes on like this beta d glucose units linked at c1 and c4 that's it that is your main difference remember first write the definition of glycogen show that we have already shown you in previous video please watch the structure of amylose amylopectin glycogen and cellulose structure also i have shown you please go through the structure you will clearly understand what am i trying to explain